Good afternoon. We're going to work on shading today in art, so I need you to listen very, very closely. We talked a little bit about how to make some shadows the other day, and we I showed you some different techniques very, very, very quickly. But today I wanted to really focus in on completing one piece of art with you. So I've recorded myself drawing a pumpkin. Thanksgiving coming up, it's Halloween soon, so this one makes sense and it's also a really good place to start. When you're at home, if you want to continue to practice the same techniques, you could continue to work on a pumpkin or you could do something as simple as an apple. Uh, any of these round objects that you find, a basketball, a soccer ball, a volleyball, it doesn't matter. Those are the easiest ones to start with because all you need is a circle to get started. When you have shadows and light in your artwork, it makes everything come to life. They look more three-dimensional, and so your two-dimensional artwork on your page, which is actually just flat, it pops out a little bit more, and it makes our eye a little bit more interested. Yes, comics and cartoons are a great way to entertain, and they're their own form of artwork, and I highly respect cartoonists. However, today we're going to work on shadows, specifically on shading with a hatching and cross-hatching technique. So I'll have you follow along with me. All you need to do is watch, pay very close attention, Dakota, please sit down, and then you're going to have an opportunity to practice. When I get back tomorrow, I hope that none of your artwork is finished, not because you're up talking and fooling around, but because you're taking your time. There's no reason to rush, there's no need to rush, and it really shouldn't be completed in as short of a period as you have today. I want to see the absolute best from you, so please pay very close attention as we get started. You need to start by drawing a light circle. Your circle doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, it's actually better if it's more than one line. So you see how I'm doing a whole bunch of scribbles? This gives me a sort of a net to work with. Once I've got the basic shape that I like, I'm going to start putting in a triangle, and you can see I'm branching off. It's almost like I'm making a star that's laying on top. This is going to be part of the stem. I, I bring the line up. This is actually the middle part of the stem. So keep watching. You can see it come to life in front of your very eyes. It's like magic. Uh, you can see here that I'm just doing very rough lines because when you're sketching, rough lines are important. You don't want perfect lines because if you make a mistake, then you're going to get frustrated. And if it ends up being absolutely perfect, you may not like the sort of the fact that it, it doesn't look very alive it doesn't look very exciting so here you can see now that I'm, I'm drawing out a darker line and this is going to become the outline that I work with when I start shading I'm just kind of getting started here with the bottom I know that the bottom is going to be darker and so I, I want to make sure that I remember to go back and do that so that's why I've I've done a bit of darker stuff towards the bottom. I'm going to create some curves, and these curves are going to help me place my shading so that my pumpkin doesn't look flat, so that it looks three-dimensional or more dimensional than a flat circle. So just watch here, you can see there's nothing perfect about this yet, and I'm going to now start doing some hatching. So you see I'm just bringing the lines down. No, they're not perfect. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be perfect, but don't rush. Now remember, keep in mind that I've been doing this for years, so that's why it's going so quickly for me. You're going to need to take a little bit more time as you get to know the hatching and cross-hatching technique. So as I color this out and, and bring those lines out, you can see I'm going back over it to add a little bit more of a scratch to it and suddenly I've got this pumpkin taking shape. I'm going to speed the video up now and you can just watch. gone through now and I've darkened it up just by continuing to go over top 
I'm gonna work on the stem now. So small hatches here and there um, all around the border and work on the outside and then bring it in. You can bring it into that middle line that, that you put first. You don't have to put that line first, that's just what I did. I'm color and rubbing just to smooth everything out. I'm going to hatch and cross hatch over top of this again but I'm gonna just use my finger. If you don't wanna use your finger, you can use the tissue or you can use uh, a napkin. Now I'm using my eraser. Your eraser is a really great tool. It's not just for getting rid of mistakes, it's great for highlighting. So I'll show you that in a bit. Right here, I'm just cleaning up the edge of my pumpkin and the shadow underneath. You definitely have to put a shadow underneath your pumpkin so that it doesn't look like it's floating. I'm cross hatching that darker and I'm bringing that right under the pumpkin. There are bigger hatches than smaller cross hatches. You want a nice combination that looks pleasing to your eye. You see here, I'm lightening it up. When, when you erase, you end up having a bit of darkness on the other side. So you want to go back and spread it around, rub it in with your finger and make it look nice and smooth. Here I'm doing the highlights. Just doing these on the bumps where the light would be hitting it the most and this really kind of brings it together so you can see here we're starting to look at a completed pumpkin now the last step of course is signing you need to autograph your work so please sign in the bottom right hand corner with your name so now that you've had a chance to actually watch how i create the pumpkin i hope that you have learned something or at least gotten some ideas some tips the biggest thing that I want to get across from you is that when you're cross hatching and hatching, doing it once is not going to be enough. You have to continue to go over top and build and build and build. Pencil is made of, of graphite and graphite is soft so it spreads around and it starts to look a little messy. So you have to really control those lines and, and really build on top of one another. So that's how you're going to get a really defined dimensional pumpkin. You want your pumpkin to stand out. So when we do the eraser highlights, don't just leave it at the eraser. You can definitely go back and give it a bit of a rub and then do another erase and continue to do that until you get the effect that you actually really like. Not the effect that happened because you wanted to be finished really quickly. Um, if you finish early, I'd like you to go back and do another one so that you can continue to practice your shading. Shading is going to carry you through art throughout the rest of this year. So don't waste your, your time by rushing. Please take your time. Before you actually get into your art now, I just want to quickly show you how to cross hatch and hatch in case you weren't quite sure of what each one was. So I'm gonna lead you through a quick tutorial on that and then you're off to the races. You've gotta get drawing a pumpkin because you're going to run out of time. So here we go. Number one hatching. All you need to remember is that hatching is lines, lines in a row. You don't have to cross over them, but you do need to remember that the closer they are, the darker it's going to look, so the darker the shade will be or the shadow, and the farther apart they become, the less dark it is. It will also change based on how dark you press, or how hard you press, how light you press. Then we have cross hatching. You can actually turn your hatch lines into cross hatch lines if you decide you don't like them, and that's done easily just by crossing over through them. You can cross through them more than once. It doesn't just have to be one line over the other like a plaid shirt. You can continue to hatch in different directions. And then you can also start to rub them. So once you've done your cross hatch lines or your hatched lines, rub it, and then definitely you need to go back over and rehatch. This will make it look a little bit more finished. So you rehatch, you'll have to press a little bit harder. Be careful with how hard you press here. That's all you need to know. 